I think, you know, to me, one, one problem that comes up is the first time we ever became a, an Inc. 5000 fastest growing company, uh, we were very excited. You know, we've won it now five or six years uh, in a row, but the first, the first year we, first year we won it, my head of operations came to me and said, Jason, um, in about two weeks, we're going to be bankrupt. Mm -hmm. So we were one of the fastest growing companies in the nation, but when it came to managing our cash, we weren't doing a good job of managing our cash. We were all focused on kind of frontline revenue and not focused on, you know, accounts receivables or profitability, certain other factors that matter. And so, you know, that was obviously a tough moment for me because, you know, we had, we had just won all these awards for being the best and, um, but we were about to go bankrupt. So how can you be a company that is considered to be the best, but then also fail at the same time? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was tough. It was a tough, tough thing. Yes. And what were the steps that you took to get back on track? Well, fortunately, um, I had a really, really good father. I had really good parents growing up. So I had great programming. And, you know, one of the things that my dad told me when I was a kid, so here's another cool story is that when I was in high school, I was, I was an all state football player in Texas, but I was also kind of a dumb jock. You know, I kind of labeled myself with the identity of a dumb jock. And so I wanted to go to a school called called TCU in Dallas, Fort Worth, a college. And, um, but I didn't get in because of my grades. Mm -hmm. And so I actually got in my truck and drove to the campus, knocked on the Dean of admissions door and, um, and said, Hey, here's my rejection letter. You know, I've been rejected here because of my grades, but I've been told that school is like 90% effort and 10% intelligence. Is that true? And he said, yeah, it's probably true. Probably right. I said, well, let me tell you if I became through that effort, became an all-state football player, broke all these records, blah, blah, blah. And if you give me a chance, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll do the same thing on the academic side. And he told me, he said, I've never, I've never had a kid plead their case. It's always been the parents that'll plead the case for the child. So he goes, I'll take a chance on you. And it was a good chance he, he took because I, I graduated three and a half years with honors. But it wasn't because I, I knew, you know, I still struggle in the sense that I, I had the effort, but I didn't have the strategy. Right. And I think a lot of people in life can do that. They have that kind of a goal and they put forth the effort, the, co the old good old college try, mm -hmm. but they don't have the right strategy in order to get there. And, but my father always said, you know, I went to him and I said, dad, you know, how do I become this academic? And he said, it's real easy. Just find like the smart kids and hang out with them. <laughs> and whatever this, whatever the smart kids do, just do that, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, so I call it, I call it legal cheating nowadays, you know, because, because think about it, it's like cheating, right? But it's not cheating because I'm not cheating off their paper. I'm cheating off of their strategy on how they became a great student, mm -hmm. right? So I'm copying them. Well, the kids today, they would actually call that with my kids, our kids, we've got a 10 year old, 11 year old, 13 year old. Our kids would say that's, that's called a, uh, a, a work through in like a video game, mm. right? So they, they, they go, they go and Google like mm. the work throughs on Fortnite or whatever it is, whatever the video game is. And they're finding these strategies on YouTube about how other players are kind of conquering these levels, right? So the kids do it all day long. Well, back then I didn't, you know, I wasn't, cheating but i was kind of figuring out the work through from other people that were strat were studying successfully and that's how i did it well i did the same thing fast forward when our company almost went bankrupt is i found um what i consider to be the smartest guy that i knew that was a successful business owner that had a very like very strong cash flow mm -hmm. you know he had, he had great cash flow he had great profitability and so i went to him his name was bob and i said bob i'm going to take you to a steak dinner where do you want to go anywhere you want to go and so we went to this really great steak dinner, $150 a person. And uh, I said, I said, I just need you to teach me everything over this steak dinner about how I can make sure I don't go bankrupt in two weeks. <laughs> and so he like taught me, he taught me everything I needed to know from a standpoint of like, you know, here's the, here's, we got to get up with first, we got, you know, we got to get you a bank loan, a 24 hour bank signature line. So I got a signature line of credit. And then we, and then from there, we've got to start managing our books and we got to get a 13 week cash flow. So I started having a 13 week cash flow. And so ever since then, that was like, I don't know, six, seven years ago, ever since then, um, I have a 13 week cash flow that's put, that's put on my desk every single Monday that shows here's our cash projections for the next 13 weeks, which is really an eternity, mm -hmm. you know? So we, so we always have a positive cash flow. We always know what's going on. And, and if we see the cash is starting to dwindle 13 weeks in the future, then I can make, you know, we can make adjustments to make sure that we're always positive. Mm, forecasting. That's great. And I love it. But listeners, this is so important. Knock on the door. 
go to the university and ask, hey, knock on the door. If you didn't get the job, apply again or apply to a similar job. I mean, it's just so interesting how that works in life. And I, I know for myself, this young kid, I was, I was in foster care 10 to 13 and homeless. And then in foster care, 13 to 15, graduated early, got a certificate in programming because it paid the most. And by the time I was 17 and a half, I got a job programming at JPL NASA and everybody in the class was smarter than me. I was not a good mathematician. I was not the best programmer. I was the only one that wasn't afraid to knock on the door and apply for the job. <laughs> so and they were like, how'd you do that? I was like, I don't know. I worked longer hours because it took me longer to write the programs, but I learned and I didn't do that forever. I got into other things, but that was the thing is just knocking on the door is all the difference. And in sales, that's like everything. And I'd love, I'd love to hear you have so many tips and information on sales and, and sales coaching. I'd love to hear more about that and some tips for people listening in that are trying to either sell themselves to get a job or working in the sales field. Oh man, I got so, I got so many tips. Okay. So, so again, I'm the creator of the warrior selling method. It's currently listed as number one uh, in the United States, number two in the world by global gurus. And it's won all kinds of awards. But there's three things that I'm always trying to dial in when it comes to being the ultimate sales warrior. Uh, number one is mindset. Number two is process. And number three is language. So we can kind of cover, we can cover all three very quickly. So when it comes to the mindset portion of it, uh, we always need to dial in and remove our leashes. So I, I call a leash is any sort of mental resistance. Like I like think of like a dog collar, a leash, something that pulls you back, holds you back, limiting belief. Well, in my book, The Mindset of a Sales Warrior, I talk about there's four types of leashes that salespeople struggle with. Uh, number one is self-image. Mm -hmm. So they have a strong view of themselves, self-confidence. You, know, um, you know, they don't believe in themselves, sense of worthiness. They don't believe they're worth, you know, make $100,000 a year, so they're, they're going to project that. Uh, number two is a story. So stories are anything external. So, you know, people aren't going to buy during coronavirus. People aren't going to buy during election. I can already tell you they're not qualified. Like, those are all stories we make up. Uh, number three is a reluctance and it's a fear, you know, fear. I don't want to come across too pushy. You know, I'm afraid of what they're saying about me behind my back. You know, I'm afraid if I call them, you know, on the phone in the morning, I, you know, they're, they're, they're with their family. If I call them during the day, they're at work. If I call them at night, they're, you know, kind of winding down their life. So I'm not going to call them. So these are like fears we make up. And then last is a rule. And a rule is anything I need to see, feel, or hear to give myself permission to engage. And so a rule might be, well, you know what, I'm going to, um, every time I send a proposal out, I'm going to send a proposal. And if I don't, if I don't hear from them within two days, I'm going to, I'm going to follow up. Mm -hmm. Like that's a rule. Okay. Yeah. Well, why is that? Why, why do you have that rule? Like, what does that, what does that do for you? Why not follow up in an hour? Why not follow up in a minute? Why not follow Like I just, like right before this call, I just closed the deal. Um, sending, I sent a proposal out. And I texted them and said, uh, the proposal is in your, you know, is in your email box. Immediately call me if you have any future questions. Otherwise, you know, I'll check in with you. Before, I'll call you in the end of the day and personally walk through any questions you might have. Um, otherwise, if you don't have any questions, go ahead and sign it. We'll get started immediately with the operations team. And we'll, you know, we're, we're a recruiting company. We're a sales training company, a sales management company. Mm -hmm. and, and so he immediately said, sounds great. And then he, he signed the DocuSign, text me back, and we're good to go, you know. But I, I don't have a rule that says I need to wait 48 hours to follow up. Right. Yeah. So these are rules, right? So, so first it's mindset. So we got to get mindset right. So you agree with that? Those, those, and, what, and what do you see out there, Sheila? I mean, do you see the stories? Do you see the rules? Do you see the reluctances, the fears? I mean, what are you seeing out there, Sheila? I do. And, you know, I have a, a big real estate team, <laughs> my other business and life, at, that I, I do a lot of online training in that industry. And so there's a lot of sales and there's agents that believe, just like you said, that, you know, it's not possible, nothing's happening. I have other agents that have never made so much money and they're doing great because interest rates are so low. <laughs> and, and so it's all mindset. And it's, it's just been really interesting. The loan mortgage people that I work with are also doing more business than ever with the, with the loans, the interest rates going down. And so then there's the ones with the mindset that it's the virus and it's this and that and a bad year and it is a bad year because they're saying it's a bad year <laughs> yeah well here, here so here's an interesting one for the real estate world 
So let's say you've got a you've got a um, a listing agent, right? And you've got the listing agent listing a person's house, and um, and and you know the the first question is, okay, well, well, you know, if I was to talk to a listing agent, I would say, what I want you to do is every time someone shows everyone, every time you've got a buyer's agent that's going to come and demonstrate and show your house, right, that you're listing, what I want you to do is is um, just tell the list, tell the buyer's agent that as soon as you get there, I'll schedule a call with you. So either A, I'll be there physically with you and help show the house, right? Demonstrate the house. Or B, if I can't be there physically, then I'll FaceTime with you as soon as you bring the buyer's agent, the buyer, the buyer, sorry, bring the buyer to my listing. And I will personally FaceTime and walk you through the listing and give you at least a, you know, a, a few minute, five minute, maybe tops overview of the house. So I can kind of tell you the story behind the house so your buyers can have the absolute best experience, right? Okay. So so I've taught that to so many different realtors in the past. And every time I teach it, a realtor goes, but that's not how we do it in this, in this business. I understand. But in the new home sales business, mm-hmm. which we actually have, we have majority of sales, we have majority of, of the training, um, we have the biggest market share of, tra- of sales training in the, the new home sales side. Well, the new home sales side, you know, you've got a, a new home sales sales agent that's sitting there and actually walking a customer through their house and they've been taught on how to sell the house. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But in the, in the general real estate world, you've got a buyer's agent that's going to go see this house the first time completely blind, has no idea even where the closet is. Right. right. And they're, they're just as, they're just as naive as the actual customer looking through the house. It's like that's the blind lead the blind. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. So like, why wouldn't you do that? You know? And so, so then I, so if I can, so when I convince customer, you know, I convince listing agents to take that approach, I mean, their sales immediately skyrocket yes. because they let go of that rule. Like it makes complete sense. Like, why would you, you know, there's, there's, there's not another, like if you go, if you go to ne- Neiman Marcus or Nordstrom's, you're going to have a sales rep that's going to walk you through the product mm-hmm. that knows the product. If you, if you buy Tupperware, you're going to be a Tupperware salesperson. If you have a car salesperson, they all have a salesperson that walks you through it, but for some reason, the real estate world, that's not how we do it here. Wow. That is so true. Right? I mean, that's incredible. I mean, I think about if I'm selling my house, I'm going to want it represented. And, and, you know, usually when you're an agent, you don't sell your own house. You have another agent rep you because of arm's length and this and that. But if you're going to have somebody, you want somebody that's going to be invested in selling every piece of that house and why it's valuable and this and that. And if somebody just stands there at the door and says, okay, go look at the house. Good luck. <laughs> Next. Okay. And doesn't do that. That's night and day. That's it's crazy. Incredible. Oh, that's, that's just, that's golden. Yeah. That's golden. So that, that's a mindset thing, right? So that's a mindset thing. So the second thing is process, mm-hmm. you know, and, and a salesperson has to have a process and, and it's, it's, it's so interesting. The majority of salespeople, if I ask them, you know, hey, so tell me your process. Like, what's your sales process from beginning to end? Majority of the time, salespeople will tell me, well, it depends, Jason, on the situation. And I want everyone to hear this, is that, is that flexible processes lead to inconsistent results. Mm, yes. Pre- consistent processes lead to predictable results. Good one. You, can't, you, you know what I mean? You can't have a flexible process like that. No, no one else does that. Like, you know, going back to the home sales concept, you know, you wouldn't have a inspector that, that follows a flexible process or the person who the original, original superintendent who built the house doesn't follow a flexible process to build the house. So right. why would, why would a salesperson follow a flexible process to sell the house? Yes, exactly. That's so true. And I'm wondering now, there's, I've had salespeople that are incredible that I've worked with and some, not in the industry as much that I work with, but that I've run into as a buyer, um, where I've had salespeople that are so pushy that I might want the product, but I'll go buy it from someone else because the salesperson was so hungry for the sale that there was no consideration for me or what I was looking for or to answer a few more questions or whatever. And I find that it's almost like this desperation. I know, you know what I'm talking about (laughs) where it's like, I'm going to try. Yeah. 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 So what I would say, what I would say, Sheila, is that 
my advice there is, you know, they need to lower the importance of getting the sale mm -hmm. and they need to raise the importance of being impeccable. Yes. So lower the importance of getting the sale and raise the importance of being impeccable. So what does that mean? It means don't be the needy guy in the bar. Mm hmm right? Don't be the needy guy in the bar. That's like, you know, just going up to every girl, just needing yeah. the date, right? Needing the, needing the get, you know, instead you want to be the, the opposite, which is the hot chick in the bar. Mm -hmm. So don't be the needy guy in the bar. Instead be the hot chick in the bar. Well, what's yeah. the hot chick in the bar? The hot chick in the bar is like, I can get any of you. I just, whenever I'm, whenever I, whenever I'm, I feel up to it, I'll give you my attention. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's yeah. this whole idea of like, yeah, I want your time. I want, you know, I, I need your, I want your business, but I don't need your business. Right. We've all heard that before, you know? And so, but again, we need to, we need to change, you know, change the focus. And so the focus for a salesperson going forward is like, if I'm working with you, Sheila, I'm lowering the importance that I need you to buy something for me today, but instead I'm raising the importance that I need you to feel safe right. and that I need you to, I need you to feel wanted and I need to help you achieve resolution. And yeah. I need you to, um, I need you to have clarity of what you're moving away from and what you're moving towards. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I need you to have all those things, right? And if I can accomplish that for you, make you feel safe, make you feel wanted, help you achieve resolution, help you get unstuck, mm -hmm. help you clarify what you're moving away from, what your problem is, and what you're moving towards your solution. And then I can kind of help you and then be your kind of guidance counselor along the way. Um, I, I can, I can, I can come across very assertive towards that resolution without coming across pushy or what you would consider to be more like needy, you know, or desperate. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's, and so that goes for relationships and sales. Obviously it's almost the same field. It is the same. Well, that's the way my dad taught me how to sell my dad. My dad owns the oldest jewelry store in Dallas. And um, when I was eight years old, I sold my first diamond mm -hmm. and he would always, he, he was really big on this. He, I mean, every analogy, he's 82 years old today, but I mean, everything, every metaphor he ever gave me is all about dating. <laughs> so. yeah, he was right on. He was right yeah. on. You know, I know because it's like red flags go up now um, with the consumer when you can't answer questions and you want to push to a, a close or a sale without really having the integrity okay if i can't give you the answer i'm going to get you the answer or whatever that step may be and i think that's part of maybe an untrained salesperson because if you are really trained in your industry you're going to have the the answers to the common questions and you're going to be able to give the proper question the proper answers and not just okay i just want just give me your money <laughs> And, and I think that maybe people are getting thrown into it without that really good training. I'd love to hear about your training programs so that people can have success in sales. Um, it is a tough game out there uh, to be in the sales industry. There's a lot of people that have great success and there's even more that don't. And I think it's that training piece that makes all the difference. It really does. You know, it really, it really does make all the difference because, you know, selling to me is the is the toughest of the performance arts. Mm -hmm. It's the toughest. Why is it the toughest? Because if you look at any other performance art, football player, musician, comedian, whatever it is, is that they all make money. So they all get paid to go do their art. Well, in sales, you, sh you, you show up every day saying, I'm working today for free. Yeah. And if I don't perform, then I don't get paid. And the better I perform, the better I get paid. But like a Broadway, a Broadway, a Broadway, um, a Broadway actress mm -hmm. is going to make the same amount of money regardless of how how she performs. Now, eventually, she might get paid more, you know, as the as the show gets better and so forth. But mm. so, so it's the toughest anyway. So as far as what we teach, um, I, I created this concept called the Warrior Selling Method, and basically, it's the it's there's five steps to understand the customer's mission to improve their life four steps to uh, present a solution and then, and then three steps to resolve the sale. Okay. So it's all based upon uh, a lot of things, but one of my backgrounds is in neuro linguistic programming and my, myself and my wife are both uh, master practitioners. So 
doesn't really mean, I mean, there's a lot of people that throw NLP around. So we have over a thousand hours of, of uh, certification around neuro linguistic programming, but it's NLP basically is that. So neuro stands for brain, linguistic stands for our speech pattern. And what's been proven by science and psychology is the way that we speak is a window into how we think and how we think drives how we feel, how we feel drives our motivations, our motivations drive our behaviors, behaviors drive our results. Well, at the same time, we can ask the right questions to understand, again, how people think, which drives all those other things. And we can use our words, our language to program how people think, which programs how they feel. Are they confident or afraid? Which programs their motivation? Do they move towards or move away? Which programs their behaviors? Do they engage or react? Which programs their results? Do they buy from you or not buy from you, right? So, so this is a, there's a lot of like science and psychology that's built into it. And NLP is nothing more than just studying what the most persuasive people are doing and, and how do they do it and what are the pieces of that. And so our 543 process, um, again, it teaches those concepts. Mm, yes. I actually did a, a retreat where we did NLP training with a bunch of uh, friends of mine in the Tony Robbins group. And we went to, to do this NLP training and had a blast. And one of the things that I learned is as a parent of, I have six children, I adopted three, three are mine. That's awesome. So yeah, and they're, you know, now they're mostly grown, but I thought, oh my gosh, parents listening in NLP training. I mean, imagine being able to guide your words so that your children agree with you more or you get things done easier. I mean, it's like sales and relationships. It's, it's making it easier. I thought, oh, I'm gonna apply this to parenting and it really made a difference even in that. And it's, it's just an incredible study. That's great, yes. Very it is great, great. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so um, so there's, again, there's all kinds of things you can teach, right? But when it comes to our process, um, so, you know, let's go back to, so who, who let, me, let, me, let me help out your majority of your audience. So, so the majority of your audience or the, or the people that are listening, um, what would be something that they sell? Is it, is it, is it, is it real estate or is it something else? I have, I would say probably a good majority, maybe 20 or 30% is real estate. And I probably have another 20 or 30% that are coaches, consultants, authors, and the rest is everybody else. <laughs> okay. So. Well, let, let me address, let me address the, 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 at least the real estate side. So, and then we can do the coaches consultants. Mm -hmm. So for example, like if I was to do my, my, the, just the first five steps of the process, it would be something like this. I'm just going to kind of model, I'm going to monologue the process, right? So, um, okay. So let's say I'm a realtor. All right, Mr. Customer. So I'm very excited about, about working with you and I look forward to finding you, you know, um, the, the best home that I could possibly find for you within the market that you're looking within, of course, your, your, um, the affordability, affordability, you know, affordable range you want to stay within, you know, there's a few things that, that people are really looking for when it comes to, you know, um, buying a home. It's either they want something larger than they have now, um, or they're looking for to live in a better part of town or a different part of town. Um, or it's, they're looking for, um, you know, maybe, maybe more backyard space than they have right now. You know, I'm curious, what would you say is like the most important thing for you? Oh, got it. So you want, you like the size you have now, but you definitely would like to have, um, a different location. Well, what specifically about the location are you looking for? Um, oh, you're looking for, for, to be closer to a better school district completely understand. So tell me about the school district you're coming from and what specifically you don't like about it. Oh, it's not that it's not, it doesn't have the ratings that you're looking for. Well, how is that causing problems with your, your kids that you have? Oh, they're hanging around with the wrong kids. Got it. So you're looking for a school district to how them to, to allow them to give better opportunities to spend more time with, you know, kids that you want them to hang around with. Um, but for the most part, you like the house that you have, you're really just looking for a different location. So, so in addition to that, if you were to, is there, if you were to change anything about your current house, what would you want to change? So meaning like how many bedrooms, how many baths is it currently? Great. Okay. So it sounds like you're looking for some extra space that you don't have right now. So you currently, you're currently in a four bedroom, two bath, and you would like to have a two story, um, with, uh, an extra game room. So suppose I could find a, you know, two story master down, you know, four bedroom home with a game room that allows you the school district you're looking for. Does that sound like a good place for us to start? It does. Great. So based upon that, if I was to find a house 
for you like that? Are you in a position that you definitely want to make a move today and, uh, and start your life and, and get, get into that new neighborhood, that new life and so forth? You are? Awesome. Okay, so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to do a little bit of research here and I'm going to go find what I consider to be our, um, you know, no more than three homes that I want to show you that are as close to kind of your vision of what you're looking for. We'll go through all three of those homes and um, by the time we're done with the third home, we either one of those homes is going to work or I'll understand the, what you like and you don't like about each one of those homes. And then I'll take you to a fourth home. And that fourth home is usually the winner uh, for everyone if it's not on the first three. Um, we'll compare and contrast that to, you know, what, what you're coming from and what you're looking, looking at and, and what you're wanting to accomplish. And again, we'll find that, find that, home, that home for you. Ready, you're ready to begin. Something like that, right? That, so that's the five steps. Yep. So the first step was a triple bind. There's a few reasons why people are looking for a home. It's either this, this, or this. Of those, what's most important to you? Second step is the comparison 360. So it's comparison three, or sorry, discovery 360. So it's it's asking questions about what they want, asking questions about what they have, and asking questions about what they've seen. Mm -hmm. Third step is the summary vision close. You're summarizing back to them what they what they want to move away from and what they want to move towards and what why it's important to them about that. The um, the fourth step is you want to categorize them. So based upon that, are you definitely going to do something, make a change? And then the fifth step is you set the agenda as far as how it's going to happen. That's okay? excellent. So the same thing apply to those Sheila if they're a coaching client, right? So 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 great. I'm I'm, I'm excited that you're interested in my coaching services right now. There's a few things that people are looking for when it comes to uh, wanting to hire me as, the, as a coach. Uh, number one is they're wanting to, you know, um, to release a problem they currently have. Mm -hmm. uh, we can talk about some sort of problem that's, that's preventing you from achieving a goal. Uh, number two is that they're wanting to, to um, uh, create a goal that they, they would like to accomplish more in their life. Uh, or number three, it's, it's a hybrid of, of, of both of those. Working, working towards a goal as well as releasing the problems they currently have. I'm curious, you know, what would you say you'd like to spend more time on today? Or what, what's the main reason why you're looking for a coach? Mm -hmm. So that's okay. the same thing, right? And then from there, I would do that Discovery 360. And they, let's say they, they say, well, I just, I have a lot of goals in my life, but I feel like I keep getting stuck. Okay, well, let's specifically talk about, you know, a goal that you have and, and where have you been stuck in the past and what have you what, what processes have you used to get unstuck with those goals? And, and what about those processes that haven't worked for you? So it sounds like you have, you have used some coaches in the past, you have achieved what you're looking to achieve. And on a scale of one to 10, this sounds like it's a very important you know, thing that you're trying to accomplish. Um, does that sound about where you are? Great. So based upon that, are you in a position to definitely make this, you know, uh, to, to make a change? Are you definitely in a position to, to do something about it? You are? Okay, perfect. So then what I'm going to do today is I'm going to share with you how I work. I'm going to share with you the process that I would take you through in order to help you accomplish the goals that you're wanting to accomplish. And then, um, and then I'll lay out a package, some package, some options um, of, of what I believe would make the most sense for us to work together. Um, I'll present a different couple of packages to you. You'll pick the one that you like the most. And if we feel like we're a good fit for each other, we can get started immediately to help you accomplish your goals. All right, let's begin. Excellent. Very good. Yes. So everybody listening in, I'm sure you're taking notes. <laughs> that was wonderful. And now how, how do people get involved with your programs? Um, what type of programs do you offer as far as your coaching program? Yeah, so my, so my company, again, we're, we're, we have a, um, we have a lot of trainers, but every single month um, we've got uh, boot camps that are kicking off virtually online. Right. Mm -hmm. So every single month, a person can go to a, you know, a business to consumer boot camp for warrior selling. Uh, we do have one specifically for real estate. So for home building and real estate. So business to home building. And then we've got um, one for business to business. So those are our three different tracks for warrior selling. And then we also have the uh, leadership track for leadership sales coaching, where we can teach managers how to be kind of a world class coach, uh, specifically around sales coaching is where we focus on a lot. Um, and then, of course, we have our recruiting service. Our recruiting service is amazing. I've, we've disrupted the entire recruiting business. So we will go out there and find you a fearless sales warrior that has the, the mindset, the process, and the language dialed in. 
Um, then we make sure that we use assessments to make sure they're better than half your existing team. Once you approve the candidate, we put them through our 90 day warrior selling training program and then guarantee their performance. Wow. That's excellent. Yeah. So no other recruiting company does what we do. No other recruiting company combines a sales only recruiting company combined with an assessment company combined with a training company all in one. So it's a complete soup to nuts, turnkey sales warrior for hire. Uh, and again, if they don't perform, we replace them for free. And we've only had to replace about 20% of the ones last year. Mm -hmm. And what do you see as a difference as far as sales um, from the people that have done the training, gone through your training? training um, what are the results? Like, what is the difference? And how long does that take to actually show up when somebody maybe signs up for, for your training, sales training? Well, they, they better get results like right after the two-day boot camp, or oh. I'm, I'm gonna get, or I'm gonna get upset with them. So, so the difference with us is that you know I really prided myself on being the first training company that can actually change behavior. So most most sales training companies they can't really change behavior because they're not it's not practical enough. So what we're doing is in our actual boot camps and in our follow-up programs that we have with customers is they're bringing their real life prospects to the table. And then my trainers are telling them what to say to get the person back on the phone, to move yeah. the deal forward, to get the deal to convert, whatever it is, right? And so, so we're not talking like in theory, like most consultants do, we're talking about like specific real life challenges and what those challenges are. And so they're, we're selling through them immediately at those boot camps and, and in those weekly follow-up calls. So everything we do is a, is a program, right? So we have a two-day boot camp that kicks it off. Mm -hmm. And then it's a six week follow-up program where they watch a bunch of videos and they get on a zoom call with a bunch of other people, about, about 30 people tops uh, for two hours a week for six weeks where they're again, mastering that script, mastering that process, putting it in their own native language. So it's think of it as like our five, four, three methodology with like their, their language, you know, their industry, their specifics. Right. And so we're kind of blending the two together. They're memorizing that, they're performing that, they're using that with their prospects over the next six weeks. And then uh, it's another two-day boot camp on prospecting and then another six weeks of accountability around prospecting. Wow, that's incredible. That sounds like a lot of training and it does make a big difference, I know, for, for training when you're working with a group. I know years ago, my first business actually in sales was not in real estate. It was actually gift stores. So after my working in programming as this young girl, I decided to open a gift store. 5,000 square feet, $5,000 a month, a dollar a square foot, got six months free rent. And I hired a bunch of people that already knew sales that were moms that needed flex time. And that's what carried my store. That's how I got into real estate. I ended up with five stores and had over 200 employees and a whole um, training program that I did with the government to train at-risk youth how to work in these gift stores. And then they would get a letter of reference after six months to go work at another place because nobody wanted to hire them. And so that helped a lot of people. And it was a wonderful thing. And so sales was something that was always a part of my life. And we just had a lot of fun with it. And it changed because we did so much training. This was, okay, I'm going to like date myself. This was back in the day when they had camcorders and, and the, you know, it was like this 20 pound camera and you had to put this big tape into a VCR <laughs> and, and that 1993-ish, something like that. And so back then I literally filmed all my training because I had to show the government how I was training these kids and every single employee went through my training and it was like, I want you, when you work here, you are me and you are going to serve each client that comes in here the way I would treat them. You're going to like really emulate me. And that's how I did that. I didn't know what I was doing. I just knew that I had to pay that rent every month <laughs> and figure out how to make money. And, and it was a really beautiful thing. Um, something that happens when, when you really need to make a difference and I, my heart was in it to help those kids at the same time. So I enjoyed it and it blessed me with the reason I got into the real estate sales was I ended up buying the other buildings, no more leasing. And I ended up getting into real estate so that I could buy and sell and do exchanges. And that's how that happened. 
but you know, that training was such a difference before I did the training, my sales were, you know, I was barely making that rent. And then once I started the training program and video recorded everything, this was before we did that, it was night and day and my sales went up and I was able to, you know, buy the first building and then buy another and another. And so <laughs> that's, that's really it. So this investment, uh, working with someone like Jason in this program and getting your team sales trained is going to make you and save you so much time and money. I mean, just rehiring and retraining people over and over again that aren't able to do their job because they don't have the training is not cost effective at all. So what do you think the savings are? Do you have like um, numbers on that or um, an idea to give people that are looking into maybe doing hiring out for sales coaching? What are the, what's the difference between um, a team that's trained and not trained? Well, I mean, the, the best that I can tell you is that 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 ninety percent of our clients that were in our full twelve month training program prior to COVID, so prior to March of twenty twenty, so almost a year ago now, uh, in March and April met or exceeded their sales goals. Now, this is across like fifteen or sixteen different industries. So, so think about how many companies everyone can go back to a year ago, you know, March and April, and how many companies were shutting down and going under. Mm-hmm. And and ninety percent of our clients that were in our full program prior to March and April met or exceeded their sales goals in March and April. Wow. So to me, I mean, that's a big testimony in itself. You know, just just to you think about how tough things were a year ago. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but but I mean, look, I I would say there's from an individual perspective. I mean, um, I've seen people's you know pe- people people go from making. $50,000 a year to making $250,000 a year, you know, during our program. Um, and obviously the biggest, the biggest numbers we see is big, huge organizations, you know, will scale quite a bit. Mm, that's wonderful. And uh, we're coming to the end of our talking time. So I'd love to hear how people could learn more, sign up for your programs and learn more about what you're doing. Perfect. So I would say, um, so definitely come to fpg.com. So F is in forest, P is in performance, G is in group.com. So fpg.com. And uh, there's all kinds of cool free resources you can, you can download, different things you can get a hold of. And then, and if you want to check it out, so we have a book, um, the, our, one of our most recent books is called The Mindset of a Sales Warrior. And if um, those who are listening right now, if you go to warriormindsetbook.com, so warriormindsetbook.com, you can actually get the book for free you just have to pay shipping and handling. Um, and Or you can go to Amazon or Audible and pay full price for the book um, if you don't want to do that route. The There's also a bunch of other offers and so forth on warriormindsetbook.com after you just pay for shipping and handling. And that book was listed as the best new sales book um, of the year by a Stevie Award in 2019. Outstanding. All right. Well, I'm definitely getting my book. And thank you again for being a guest on the show. For those tuning in, stay tuned. We'll be back after these messages. All right, I have found something magical, something new that I am loving. At this stage in my life, I have been switching to the cleanest, best, healthiest makeup, shampoos, uh, facial products. So I did find a incredible... Uh, makeup line and they have been around quite some time it is called beauty counter and if you go to beautycounter.com slash sheila mac s-h-e-i-l-a-m-a-c or sheilamac.com and at the top of the menu look for natural beauty that will bring you to a site where you can learn about the specials and give clean beauty a try I am just loving the difference it's making in my face. And one of the things that was really bothering me was a lot of the other products. I I could not find eye makeup that wasn't irritating me. So this is really like one of the few products I can actually wear around my eyes. And so I'm really loving everything. It makes my skin feel really clean and fresh. And so give it a try. Again, SheilaMack.com. 
Facebook.com slash natural beauty to learn more. My car and my cat due to a fire. It sounds like a country music song, but that was my reality. And yet another rock bottom situation. After a long period of doing really well, when we're able to retrain our minds to focus on the positives, we're able to enjoy more of life even while we're rebuilding and rebooting. We're going to starve those negative thoughts, not feeding them with our attention, time, or energy. When you focus on the good parts of your life, those things that you can be grateful for in this moment, that energy will bring even more good things your way. Contribute and utilize your unique talent. You're not thinking about the problem at hand. You're not showing up for approval. You're just being your best self. You use your rock bottom to set the direction for your life beyond this rock bottom situation. It's important that you are really honest about where you are in this situation. You can't lie because you don't want to give up your personal responsibility. You have to own every part of this and realize it could be worse. It could be better, but this is it. If you aren't able to be honest about where you're starting from, you won't be able to clearly see where you want to go or how to get there. The next letter of boots will help you answer that. The second O is for order of operations. The third step of the boots formula is finding the order of operations. When you're in a rock bottom moment, there are certain steps you know you need to take to get out of it, and you need to complete those steps in a certain order. T is for thinking. The fourth step of the Boots formula is thinking. If you recall your thinking at the most successful points in your life, it's probably vastly different from your thinking when a crisis brings you to a rock bottom situation. Often, at the toughest times, our thinking goes to survival. We lose sight of the possibilities and opportunities that are before us. This is where thinking comes into play. It's vital to have a strong mindset in order to keep our boots on and walk out of a rough spot in life. Thinking leads you to a clear vision of where you want to go on that map of your desired outcome. You've made the decision that you're going to New York. Your bags are packed. You have an idea of how you're going to get there. You know the steps you need to take, though you may not know how the hell you're going to take them all, but you've made up your mind. That's where you're going. Tony Robbins often says, it's in the moment of decision that one's destiny is shaped. That decision is the thought that comes before the action steps required to reach your new goal. Everything happens in this step in that decision. You can see it, feel it, embody it. Things start to show up because you're looking for them and you're open to them. You'll start getting the results you want just because that decision is in your mind. It becomes that real to you. Once you have that clear vision in your mind, you have to see yourself as if you already are living in your desired reality. You're just doing the steps to get there. S is for stepping up. The fifth and final step of the boots formula is a literal step, stepping up. You've gone through the first four steps. You've decided how you're going to show up. You have a picture of where you're going. You know the steps you need to take and you've made the decision to actually do something. It would be nice if you could just sit, think, and meditate your desired outcome into being. But that's not the way it works. There is some validity to the idea of manifesting what you want. But at the same time, you have to believe enough to actually go out there and take the risk. You have to overcome your fear of giving your first presentation, making your first speech, or writing your first book. You have to get out of your comfort zone, and you have to take those steps. S is for stepping up by taking the personal responsibility required for a real reboot. While the be in boots is about being in the present with who you are in the situation, S is for taking those steps toward the future you want. Is not one size fits all, just like a pair of boots or a bra. So the formula is designed to help you through any situation. to grab a copy of my new best-selling book, Bootstraps and Bra Straps, the formula to go from rock bottom back into action. If you are just tuning in, 
This is NBC's Sheila Mack Show here on KCAA Radio, the station that leaves no listener behind. I'm your host, Sheila Mack, and I have some news for you. Yes, you. I'm celebrating my third year now on the station and will be expanding the show to a global network as well. You may now find the Sheila Mack Show on all major podcasting channels, and if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, all the episodes are now available for viewing there as well. And I'm asking you for a quick favor. If you like the show, please help support the spread of this reboot channel on YouTube as well. My goal is to help as many people as possible through our interesting times to rebuild, reinvent, and reboot your business and personal life. I also wanted to share a little bit more about how I got here, what I do now, and how designing a business career and life on your terms is more than possible at any age or stage in life. I am an enterprisingly forward-thinking consultant, show host, and best-selling author. But how did I get here? Well, I began my career as an entrepreneur and property investment strategist back when I was 23 years young, when I boldly quit my government job with NASA JPL to open my first of five large gift stores while also starting to invest in property. I got to work with some of the world's most loved companies, such as negotiation on leases with Warner Brothers and winning trips to London as the top-selling Crabtree and Evelyn provider in the U.S. for multiple years. My stores were built on heart as I gave back to the community I came from. So now, some of you know this and some of you don't know this, but as a young girl with parents who were not well enough to care for me, I was homeless at age 10, then in foster care, where it was really hard to get a job while in the system. I finally emancipated at the age of 15 to start college early. While running my stores, I worked with a government program. Back then, it was called Jobs Training Partnership App, making my stores an open source training site where close to 200 at-risk youth started their careers. Yes, I began my career helping business leaders and working professionals to design a life they love where they can have success in their careers and get to the business of life. See, a funny thing happened along the way. Uh, When I first opened my gift store, it was kind of crazy because I was this young upstart. That's what a lot of the store owners called me. Uh, My first store was in Montrose, California in this little hometown uh, shopping park with other stores and restaurants nearby and so I was the young upstart that didn't know what she was doing at least that's what everybody said and I didn't really care what they said (laughs) Uh, at that age you know their opinion was like I don't really care so that that was probably a really good thing because I stayed focused on what I needed to do. And I had negotiated uh, to lease out a 5,000 square foot gift store that needed a lot of work and I, I got free rent and uh, for about six months and I had to start making the rent, which was 5,000 a month, which was a lot of money back then, a dollar square foot. And so I had to learn and relearn. I, I finally did hire qu- quite soon in the game. I did hire a marketing expert, branding expert, I guess back then. And uh, that lady really helped me to figure things out when I first started. And when you first start a business, especially when you're young, it was like, <laughs> I had no idea what to do, but I needed to learn because my rent was going to start coming due every month. And over that time, I started having more success. I did crazy things like stayed opened until almost midnight every night, along with the restaurants who were very close to my store, while everybody else closed shop at about 5 or 6 p.m. So I was making more money from the start, and I just really, my 
KCAA Loma Linda. The Legacy KCAA 1050 AM and Express 106.5 FM. KP News, I'm Ben Thomas. The White House. NBC News Radio. I'm Michael Kastner. Israel is intensifying military.